Hi, good morning. My name is Nigel Chambers of Big O Belt Media. Haley and Malcolm, congratulations on the season four announcement today. Uh, well yeah. deserved. Yeah, um, thanks. Season, absolutely. And season three is uh, definitely kicked off uh, with, with a lot of things to talk about here. Um, talking about the character Lulu, Malcolm, we get our first mention in slight introduction of his father e-train who mm. we know is a as a man who's given up on boxing given up on music would essentially correlate that to him giving up on even on his family what does wow. that mean wow. thanks for making him a loser that's that's appreciate that one bro for sure i mean <laughs> Inter interesting enough though just recently watching a tyler perry documentary you realize that even having you know abusive or just a father figure in out, you know, that's absorbing within the household that could be detrimental, but yet he took it in a way to be positive. I'm curious to know Lulu stating and knowing everything that his dad had went through and gave mm -hmm. up, and he still continues to push forward with music. What yeah. source of motivation does his dad's story fuel for him in his pursuit uh, and love for music? Uh, I think we all have root triggers that that originate from our juvenile experiences. And I think that those take root so deep when they're so early that you don't even understand why your motivation towards something is so ingrained in you. I mean, even if you just take the natural byproduct of people having um, certain characteristics of their parents and they've never met their parents, uh, people saying, you know, like, I know, I'm, you know, I've had friends whose mamas be like, you act just like your daddy. Nigga ain't never met his dad. This doesn't make any sense. Um, but knowing that those kind of genetic echoes happen on something as casual as mannerisms, I can only imagine something that your parental figure may have been in love with and had a deep passion for. And you had the opportunity to see them in a positive life in that space specifically, what what that would have, um, what kind of impression that would leave upon a young child. So to me, that's where the source of all of his his love and passion comes from is that it's not only a place of something that he enjoys and it's a, a burgeoning, you know, a uh, genre of music that he's a part of and grown up with, like just on a surface level, but even on a deeper level, it's the only place he ever saw his father happy. It's the only place he's seen any family member truly happy other than rock selling drugs, of course, um, or Haley singing, you know, like that, those are, that's why there's always that th through line. And I think, you know, Haley can comment on this if she'd like, but I've always have a smile on my face when I talk to both of my, my, my niece and my nephew. And it's because they're a place where happiness resides untouched. And so when our relationships corrode, her singing is why I took such an interest is because it just reminds me of my father, of happiness, of family, of unity, of peace. And um, that's why I think he's so connected to that. And I, Haley, I think that's why we always share such a pretty good relationship in the first two seasons at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how's it going, Lande? Uh, Nigeria Chamber how's it of going? Media, welcome. Um, Thank you, man. Listen. Uncle Marvin is the poster child for therapy. It works. And we're seeing it on display. And even in the height of him setting up his 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 move on Wall Street or with the Wall Street boys, shall I say, in the club, he decides to leave to go take care of his homie Gerald, which was a very interesting decision being made there. Can you can you can you talk about the mental state progression from season two to season three? with Marvin, who struggled with the relationship with, with his daughter, that's now become her biggest fan in this season, and also is being able to set the business aside to handle personal things. This is a tremendous uh, development that I didn't see coming for who I thought was the, the, the stone-cold killer of the family. Uh, first, shout out, to, uh, shout out to Haley and Shout out to Malcolm for that for that live, Malcolm. I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> thank you all. <laughs> thank you all. That's the first thing. Uh, you know what's interesting about about this uh, this quest that that Marvin is on is that I think he's uh, is a reflection of how we how most of us are in our regular lives in the sense that we, if you don't know us, we everyone has this idea of who we think or who they think we are, but it's not until we sit back and we have a conversation with someone, or in this case, when we look at Marvin from the outside, we're able to see like, yo, he's not just one thing, or he's not just the guy holding, uh, getting into some nefarious acts, but he's still, he's human. And even with Marvin, I think Marvin didn't even realize how much he needed to grow, but it took someone to slow him down, 
who actually care and say, okay, hold on. I know you you got this persona you're trying to keep up, which a lot of times we do just in our way of protecting our, our own selves from ourselves. But it was through therapy where we find out, we say, oh, okay, Marvin does have a side of him that hasn't really been able to be tapped into because, again, the, he's so busy focused on uh, the family business and Rock ain't even got the sensitivity to slow down to even address and say, hey, what's going on, big brother? Lou in his own world. I'm supposed to be there for my daughter. My daughter don't have time to be trying to ask me what's going on. So it's a, it's a, it is a journey. But when we go into that the following season where Marvin has been able to say, hey, there's some other sides of me, and I was able to see those sides, it's, it's, diff- it's not as difficult to see the issues within Gerald's life because he, there's a part of Marvin that he can see within Gerald. So I think that causes some sympathy for him to say, you know what? I'm not going to push him to the side like I've been done before in a few cases. We saw that in season one where at one point Rock, you know, she kind of threw her hands up with Marvin. and But Marvin still circled the block for his brother. So, you know, that's what's so funny about Rock, too, is like everyone had Rock in the beginning of the season, like the queen, the most responsible queen bee, you know. But she still is navigating things. And like, like Malcolm was saying, there was a part of Rock where, she kind of she don't have time for she ain't got time to dealing with 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 Malcolm or with Lulu and some and there's some times in, in with in early on in the season where she didn't have time for Marvin but circling around uh, I think Marvin is starting to see it because of therapy was able to see a side of him that said that's a little more connected to other people he, we saw this when he dealt with Sam the the crackhead he, he was able to have a little sympathy there we saw this even when he dealing with his daughter. He had to step out of him, stop being selfish and say, hey, man, my, my daughter needed me. I ain't been what I needed to be. So uh, therapy is a journey that I think we can all appreciate.